I felt good. Um, people were probably doubting me now. Can I run 1049 again? And I do believe that I can. When? I don't know. I, I feel that I have not reached my peak. I was saving that for Seoul. So we'll see in Seoul. With a fresh new confidence that is easy to understand, Florence Griffith joined a racist to change the silver medal image. Her legendary 1984 fingernails have been trimmed and are now most definitely accented in the color gold. Her self-designed outfits get your attention, too. The Florence motto, dress to look good, look good to feel good, and feel good to run fast. You have to feel good in order to perform good. And that's why I design my clothes the way I do. Uh, people have given me different outfits to try on. If they don't feel good, I don't feel confident wearing it. And I don't want to get to the line um, thinking about my outfit. is it, it doesn't fit good. It doesn't feel good. You have to feel good about yourself before you can perform good, I believe. This week, husband Al Joyner failed to qualify in the men's triple jump, but he is still right there for her all the time. And he'll be the first one to tell you he enjoys being married to the world's fastest woman because it means he was fast enough to catch her. They found my car. <laughs> <laughs> How did you do that? Oh, she was running. I cut a hole in the track and she fell through. That's only got caught. <laughs> The world record is only part of what Florence wants. She knows the target date and thinks she and the team are very ready. A lot of the Americans didn't compete that much over in Europe prior to coming to the trial, so we haven't overrun ourselves this year. Um, a lot of people are saying that the East Germans, everybody's going to be ready but the Americans. Um, and we're pulling together to say we want the records. We're tired of everybody else having the records. We know that we can come together and do it. She already has one re world record in the 100 meters, while husband Al Joyner's hopes are still alive in the 110 high hurdles still to come today. Gwen Torrance at 23 may be the heir to the sprinting throne when Florence Griffith is done, perhaps in lane six. And Valerie Briscoe, the first woman since Wyoming Atias and Wilma Rudolph to win three Olympic golds. She is in lane seven. Quickly then the rest of the field. Danette Young, very, very quick, is in lane one. Lane two will be Wendy Vereen. Alice Brown is in lane three. She could also be a factor here. Pam Marshall in four, then Griffith Joyner, Gwen Torrance, and Valerie Briscoe. Diane Williams, 27 years old, from Los Angeles, is in lane eight. The world record is held jointly by Marita Koch of East Germany and Heike Drexler. Both of them have run that time of 21.71 twice. While Florence Griffith Joyner's American record was set yesterday and is still to be confirmed at 21.77. And here is the fashion update for today, yet as unique as we might have expected it to be. Has lace ever been carried to a world record? Anything I say, Al, is going to get me in trouble, but that is the first time she's covered both legs. I will cut to the matter we should be thinking about here. Gwen Torrance, just on the outside lane, is in a perfect position for an upset. I believe Farnes can break the record, but Gwen Torrance, just on her outside, is a slow starter, but she does come on in the last 50 meters, and she's in perfect position to use that kind of strategy. Florence will control the race. Everyone else runs their race, keying at, off of Florence. Alice Brown will try and think in her mind, I've got to be out before Florence. Gwen Torrance will be thinking in her mind, I've got to stay with Florence in the turn and then reel her in in the straightaway. So everything revolves around her. You mentioned Torrance, Marty. She earned a spot on the U.S. team in the 100 meters with a third place finish in that event behind Florence Griffith Joyner and Evelyn Ashford. And like Ashford, Valerie Briscoe wants a chance to go to the Olympics again. She's changed her nails from the opening rounds to now, but they're still trimmed in gold. Remember the world mark, 21.71. Got to keep an eye on the wind, too. It's been gusting. <laughs> and off the start, it looks as though Florence Griffith Joyner is off to a very good start. Next to her, remember, is Gwen Tarns, and then Valerie Crisco. And it is those three side by side coming down the stretch. Florence Griffith Joyner. Next to her, Gwen Tarns. Florence Griffith Joyner. But really being tested and across the line in 21.84. Pam Marshall was also there. 21.84, not an American mark and not a world mark. But she has won the heat and will represent the United States 
in both events, thereby becoming the first woman since Brenda Moorhead in 1976 to win both the 100 and 200 meter events at the Olympic trials. That was the closest race we've seen her get from the uh, Americans here at the trials. Gwen Torrance is third from the left. She starts to make a run at her, but Pam Marshall in the blue right next to Florence is the one who has the best shot at her as they enter the final uh, 50 meters. Florence just concentrating on keeping her arms. She's very strong in the upper body this year. After eight races, she doesn't have quite the snap she had at the 100 meters, but going through tough competition like this, it's like no other meet in the world. She'll go into the Olympics with an edge on sprinters from any other country. Once again, you see Gwen Torrance really pumping the arm. She watched Florence get that bit of a lead on the straightaway. She tried to move on her in the middle of the race. Actually, Gwen had a little problem there, almost went out of her lane. Pam Marshall, who was a sprint sensation last year, making a good run at her. But once again, Florence, the victor of both the 100 and the 200 meters.